Hello, and welcome to this rigging tutorial. We're going to be rigging the character Kiki that I had commissioned by the artist Lexi Havas. For this video, we're going to be focusing on setting up a scene before we do any rigging, before we do anything else, prepping it for the rest of the tutorial. This won't be as heavily edited as the introduction to videos, which I highly recommend watching because the three videos that I made introduction to drawings, the formers and pegs are all the basis for this tutorial. So if you have a question about what's happening in this, it'll probably be answered in those videos. What we're doing first is we're going to move around some of our workspace. This is highly individual, but I find this is the best setup for me for rigging. And it also includes a lot of things that aren't open by default that are very important while rigging. We're gonna move our color over here. We're going to move our node view to the right. And now, if you have a default node view that doesn't have any of the options on top, you can click the plus and go down to node view. You'll make a second tab and this one will have all of the options. And we're gonna go to these plus. We're going to make a couple of new windows. A second camera that we're going to drag down here. This won't always be open, but it's especially important for master controls or sliders, anything that won't be visible on this screen that you need to see. Next, we're gonna do drawing substitutions. We're gonna drag this over next to the colors. Okay, that should be it for the workspace. Now we're going to add on a lot of the tools that we're going to be using. If you right click over here and go down to alignment guides, it will plop them up here, but I prefer having them over here. This means that you can make alignment guides on the screen and move them around. Next, we're gonna go up here, right click, customize. And we're going to want to grab the tool envelope creator underscore show UI. If we type it in envelope creator show UI, click the arrow, click apply, click OK. This makes envelopes automatically when you make a shape. We're going to come over to our node view. We're going to go to customize again. Clone drawings only. We're going to want that. Pull it over, click apply, click OK. And lastly, if we go back up to the top. Next to your rigging tools, we want to have coordinates on, so we get all of these options. This helps us see if a piece of the rig is pushed in Z depth, so forward or backwards, and how far forwards and backwards it is. The second step we have to do for setting up our harmony is to go to our preferences, so edit, preferences, and we're going to go turn on and turn off a couple of preferences. So in the general tab, we're going to turn on focus on mouse enter, and we're going to turn on each and every one of these in the settings section. In the node view tab, we're going to click on double click on node opens the editor. In timeline, we're going to click on reduce indentation. In the OpenGL tab, have on enable composite pass through for all effects. In the advanced tab, turn on support overlay and underlay apps, advanced display, turn off element node animate using animation tools default value. And that's it for settings. All right, let's get down to importing everything. We want to get rid of the drawing that's made by default. We're going to go over to File, Import, Images, find where your file is. If you have a PNG, you can import that. Or if you want the high, like the highest quality version of the file, if you have it, is the Photoshop file. You can also import that. Create a single layer, import as Tomb of Bitmap. Okay, okay. And now we have our reference. We can rename it. Go over here, give it a peg. And this is where we decide on what scale we want for the character. So first of all, the alignment tools that we made, you want to click a horizontal and a vertical. So now you have the perfect center of the screen and then you can lock this so you can't interact with it. You can also come down here and click safe area. So you have another set of alignments. We go to Kiki's peg and we take a rotation tool and move the pivot to Kiki's torso. I'm going to use the reference of her belt for her center of mass. And we're going to bring that over to the center of the scene and shrink. Great, now that we have a character, we can go to our palettes. Bring the palette up, 
bring this out a bit more so we can see our options get rid of all the colors make a bunch of new colors and then start going down the character we're going to need line this is going to be the baseline on the whole character Now that we have all of our colors named, we're going to go click and use this picking tool to pick all of the colors. Because we don't know what the interior mouth looks like, we are just going to either assume or what I like to do is make it a very bold color so we don't forget to change it when we go back. So go to and make each a different color. For interior colors that we don't see, so we're going to pick the color of the exterior color and we're going to go to V on the color selector and just pull this slider and make it a bit darker. Great. Now we have all of the colors. We are going to add in a color card plug into our composite so we're kind of not left with this infinite gray space behind us we're then going to grab our peg with our drawing and we're going to hold alt and down and we're going to push it very forward and you can see the number going up here this is so while we're working on it the design is permanently in front of the cat a lot of people when they're working on a character they will get a transparency node and plug it in so the design is transparent and you can see the rigging behind it. The issue is when you select the drawing, it's no longer transparent. Then you can click this orange box on the reference, go to advanced opacity and bring it down to 50. So now if you grab it, it's still transparent. We're going to now lock that. We can also lock the color card. So we're not constantly selecting it whenever we click off the character. So now that we have our character scaled down, we are going to make a new drawing and we can call it either pivots, which is what I usually call it, or articulation. Uh, I prefer pivots. We're going to go to our lips tool. We're going to go to our toolkit and pick the color color. Go to the center of the character and we're going to create a circle. For the purposes of this character, we're going to go with a 2.5 scale on all the lines. If you don't know what line you want and you have a pretty good reference, you can make a line next to the reference or on top, select it, and then mess with the scale until you're happy. So this character is 2.5. If you're working on a production, you'll all have the same scale. What is our pivot point for? This is the center of the character. This is where the top of the character will rotate around and we're going to make these for the limbs as well. So there's some key points where we want to put these articulation points. Sometimes on a character, you would want one on the upper shoulder and then on the lower arm. I tend to not do those because most of the time your upper shoulder is going to be covered by a sleeve and your lower arm is going to be covered by your hand. So there's not really a point of having an excess amount of articulation points. When doing a limb like this arm, where the upper arm is a straight shape and the lower arm is a bumpy shape. We want to match the scale and then just lower it a little bit. So this part of the arm will do a full rotation around the circle and the top piece will also do a full rotation around the circle. Once you have all of your circles drawn, we're going to fill them 
and grab the fill and then we're going to shrink the fill so there's a small point when you're making pegs the peg pivot point will be placed right here on the inner circle and the line of the object is going to be drawn around the outer circle so when your arm or your leg or your body rotates they're going to perfectly rotate around one another And all your points I made on one side of the body, we're going to copy, paste, shift up, and we're going to use this option to flip, and then we're going to move over. For the rest of the articulations, we're going to select everything, copy and paste it. We're always going to want the middle drawing to be even across the board, so when we pose the character for the turnaround, they're all equal. When we get to our side view, we can delete one side of the articulations and only pose out the front arm and the front leg. Once we have all of our articulations, we're going to make a new peg on top of the reference peg and plug that in to the pivots. This is going to be the peg that we move, so both objects follow it. We're going to use our alignment tools and a safe area so we know exactly where the center of the screen is. We're going to match up the core pivot in each view. And now you have a perfect rotation. Now let's get into a rigging toolkit. We have our palette toolkit with all of our colors. Now we're going to make a rigging toolkit. Over in the node view, we're going to want to create a bunch of items. We're going to make a overlay layer, underlay layer, inner art layer, color art layer, cutter, second cutter, transparency, visibility, a auto patch. So an auto patch node, and we're going to make a auto patch group as well for specific situation. Once we have all of these, we're going to go through and name them all. But we're going to shorten the name of all of these so our node view is a lot more tidy. And lay is going to be UL, color out is CA, line out is LA, overlay is OL. We have a cutter, CTR. So we're going to call this cutter a inverse cutter and we're going to select this mask on the node so it's inverted. Visibility and transparency, we're going to open visibility. We're going to display an OpenGL and soft render. We're going to turn off the soft render so whatever is plugged into this will be visible in the OpenGL while we're working on it but when we render it will be invisible. Transparency is fine at 50. We have a visibility, a transparency, and we're going to take an overlay, plug each of these into one another, and we're going to make them a group. I like to call it transvis, delete the composite inside of the group. And then we have a base auto patch, we're going to call that AP. And just as a backup for certain situations, we're going to make our own auto patch, which is a color art and a line art, a cutter cutter is plugged into the color art and the line art is cutting the cutter. Group those and call this one color batch. We're going to select all of these and we're going to go to insert, back drop, call this toolkit. Now all of our rigging will be done using these. And finally we're going to set up the general layout for each of the body parts going to make a composite, plug it in. This is going to be the base composite for the character. So we're going to call it car underscore kiki composite. And we're going to make six more. 01 arm composite, 02 arm composite, body composite, 01 leg composite, 02 leg composite. We'll straighten these out, plug them in. And we're going to create displays. So create a display. There's going to be one for the character. 
and one for the head. This is mainly used for animation when they solely want to focus on like lip sync or facial animations. You would name it if there is multiple characters. The way this is character Kiki display, you could say character Kiki head display. For this instance, there's only one character. Along with these six composites, we're going to make a seventh. The seventh is going to be a tab composite. So basically, if we have a little invisible uh, controller or handle to move an arm or to move the eyelids or anything that kind of interacts with the character that isn't the character, it's going to go into this composite. So if we have a tab, we're going to plug it in. We're going to come over and take our transvis group, we're going to paste it, we're going to plug it in. And we're going to make something called apply peg transformation. The top wire is going to go into the right, and then that's going to go into the composite. And we're going to make a peg and plug it in to the left. Call this peg tabs. What this is doing is it's like a peg that goes on top of a drawing, it's just at the bottom. This means that even though everything that is going to get plugged into this option has a peg on top of it. This peg is kind of going to override it and move everything forward. So if we have a selected and use our animation tools, hold off and pull forward, and you can see over here, the number's going forward. That means that if we move the arm behind the body, the tab will still be in front of the body so we can easily grab it. We're going to insert backdrop, and we're gonna change this to purple. That is the end of part one. This was setting up the file, so we set up the palettes, we set up the toolkits, we set up the turnaround, the pivots, the tabs, and each of the composites that the rig is going to plug into. The next video is actually not going to be part two, it is going to be an introduction to video, like the previous ones, but for cutters, because understanding cutters is very pivotal to understanding what's going to happen in the future. So the next video should be a introduction to cutters and then following that should be rigging key key pad two, where we'll start off with the head. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Talk later.